for 20 years, I've done my best to stay behind the camera and not, um, not appear in front of the camera. As we headed out to the fire base in the Special Forces chopper, n none of us could imagine that we ourselves would become part of the story before the trip was over. But the way events unfolded, everything changed. And this trip to Afghanistan, we did become part of the story, um, uh, was because we were caught up in the same um, mass casualty event uh, as uh, a lot of the soldiers we were filming. Other than the guys inside the vehicle, we were closest to the truck, just 35 feet away when it blew up. When it blew up, I do remember in an instant just seeing the back end of the truck heave up into the air. The sound was so loud, it was, uh, it, the only way I can describe it is it was almost silent. There was a flash of light. The flash of light essentially seemed to consume my cameraman, Ryan. Ryan just disappeared. And at that time, I just figured he was dead. Your reaction is, holy sh I can't believe that just happened to me. I have a little baby at home. I have a wife. What am I doing here? I'm here by choice. <laughs> I was shocked. I was surprised that, that I was intact. I was certain that I'd lost a foot or a hand or arm or something. When I first saw Ryan, he was covered in a blanket. He looked pretty bad. He was going into shock, but I knew he was alive. And I said to him, I said, I thought you were dead, man. And he looked at me and he said, I thought you were dead too. Ryan was injured worse than I was, a lot worse than I was, I thought. And um, he had deep second degree burns up and down his arms and it, on his face. Uh, we both had shrapnel through our faces and up and down our arms. Um, and uh, I too had second degree burns up and down my face, but not as deep as his. In the Dutch Field Hospital, I reached over to Ryan and I held his hand and he reached back and held my hand. And he said to me, Steve, it's not your fault. I don't blame you for what happened. We both made the decision to come here. And, uh, you know, I pretty much broke down in tears a little bit because um, that weighed heavily on my mind. Making films is always personal, but this film had become intensely personal. My cameraman was in a burn center. We both were at risk of losing our sight. We had witnessed guys die in combat, essentially. We had witnessed that a lot of other guys uh, suffer pretty significant wounds. And um, we weren't just gonna let the story go. It was too intensely personal by that time. Hopefully, we're just holding up a mirror to a reality, to what's going on out there. People can take away from it just deeper insight into the complexity of the war being waged in Afghanistan and the incredible difficulties and sacrifices being made by those who are, who are waging that war. The one thing that strikes you when you get out there is just how kind of um, resourceful these guys are, how autonomous and how alone, I mean, how on their own they are. Yeah, we have the most powerful military the world's ever created, but these guys are pretty much out there on their own with what they have, you know, on the base and at their disposal. I don't want to gather too much attention to what, what I went through and what the National Geographic film crew went through because the focus should be on, on the Special Forces soldiers who were out there in the field and who are still out there in the field and enduring all of the hardships and dangers and losing friends and taking risks every day. Just watch out because you got dismounts over here. Right. We went out for just a, a, a short brief window of time and came back home. These guys go out and, and see friends uh, get killed and wounded and then go out again the next day and the next day and the next day.